Hello, 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 and welcome to this edition of A Quick Pipe. Now, today I'd like to talk about what it's like to live in a high-trust society. And before I do that, I want to appeal directly to those of you who live in the same high-trust society that I live in, in your own language. Laurentiner, Tano Laurentiner, Oli Tosi Mielinkin Toinen Paiva. Mamenin Elokuva Teatorin, Osta Kax Liput, Super Mario Brothers Elokuvasta. Aux menule ja aux mun pojale. Ja siten mä pyörasin takaisin. Ja mä pudotin mun lompakko lähellä Oulun keskusta. Se oli kolme sekuntia virhe. Mä haluan tarkistaa, jos mun äh, elokuva äh, liput oli äh, inglannin kieli äh, Super Mario Brothers versiosta vai suomen kieli versiosta. Ja sitoin, milloin mä olen uh, onnellinen, että se on englannin kieli versio, mä laitanut uh, mun lompako, mun taskun takaisin, mutta ei kunnolla, ja se, se meni pois. Ja mä pyrälin pois. Kun mä tulin takaisin, mun lompako oli poissa. Ja tämä oli tarkia juttu, koska mun lompakossa oli kaikki, oli mun kaikki elämä, oli mun luottokorti, oli mun ajokorti, oli mun kellokorti, kellokorti, oli mun permit to remain, mikä se on oleskulu lupauskorti, oli mun koko elämä. Ja heti mä peroin mun luottokorti, mutta totta kai se ei oli tarpeellinen. Se ei oli tarpeellinen. Koska mä asun Suomi. Mä asun Suomessa. Mä asun Suomessa. Ja mä menin poliisi asemalle eilen. Ja yksi päivä sitten tämä mies oli siellä minun lompakko kanssa. Ja hän anti takaisin minun lompakko. Ja siellä oli ollut raha minun lompakossa. Ja raha oli vielä jäljellä. Miksi? Koska minä olen Pohjois-Suomessa. Koska millä olen Oulussa, millä olen Pohjois-Suomessa, ja Suomi on korkea luottamus uudeskunta. Ja korkea luottamus uudeskunta, esimerkiksi Suomessa, totta kai ihmiset ovat rehellinen, ihmiset antavat takaisin sun raha, ihmiset antavat takaisin sun omistus. Kaikki meni hyvin. Hyvä Suomi. Hello, hello, hello. Right, now. What I was explaining there was that uh, what happened to me on Saturday was that I was cycling back from the cinema where I had purchased for my son and myself tickets to the new Super Mario film because it happened to be half price that day. When I checked my, I thought, I thought to myself, did I, did I get tickets for the English language version or the Finnish language version? And so I checked and yeah, it was fine. And then I, as far as I was concerned, I put my wallet back in my pocket and I cycled off home. When I got home, couldn't find my wallet. Couldn't find it. Oh my God, panic stations. Because everything was in there. Not just my credit cards and whatever, but my driving license, my permission, my certificate, to my, my card that allows me to be a resident in Finland, my uh, social security card, absolutely everything. So I cycled back looking for it and it was gone. And in a way, I was kind of worried enough that I cancelled my credit cards but it wasn't really necessary because this is Finland. This is northern Finland. And I basically didn't have to worry. I, was, could, I could be fairly confident that within a couple of days, the police stations closed at the weekend. I could be fairly confident someone was going to pick it up. And then probably after work on the Monday, they were going to go to the police station and hand it in. So I went to the police station today, Tuesday. I gave them my name. And of course, my wallet had been handed in. I said, who's handed it in? And I want to give me his name. I'll, you know, I'd like to give him a reward. And the guy said, no, we don't have a name. No. And that was that. Now, that wouldn't have happened in London. Or at least I could have been rather less confident that something like that would have happened in London. But I was really rather confident. Not completely confident. I, I rang up the uh, Finnish authorities and said, well, should I get a new one of these cards, a replacement, which would have cost me 120 euros? I could be fairly confident. 
And it got me thinking, well, why is this the case? Why is Finland such a high trust society? What's it like living in a high trust society? Well, it's not just that. It's that you can, outside of the city centre, as long as you're in the suburbs, you can leave your bike unlocked. You can leave your front door unlocked. You just do not have, to, you have letter boxes which are unlocked that are at the front of the houses and anybody could just open your letterbox and tamper with your mail. But they won't. They won't. Because this is a high trust society and people won't do things like that because they wouldn't want them done to them. And I look at this, if you're interested, in my book, The Silent Rape Epidemic, How the Finns Were Groomed to Love Their Abusers, which is available on Amazon, and the reasons why. First of all, intelligence is associated with trust. If you have low IQ, you might as well trust nobody because you, you don't have the ability to work out correctly whether or not to trust people. So the simplest thing to do is to trust nobody if you have low IQ. If you have high IQ, then you can afford to trust people. You could not trust other people. You can afford to reason, I'll trust that person, I'll trust that, not trust that person. And therefore it can be to your advantage because it can be advantageous to trust certain people and not other people because you can make alliances and you can develop and you can create more complicated systems and so forth. So therefore trust is associated with intelligence. Finland, as I have demonstrated in a number of papers based on PISA, would seem to have the highest average IQ in Europe. Um, and not only that, it has the fastest reaction times in Europe, and reaction times correlate with IQ at about 0.3. And so this would be consistent with people that are high in social trust. And if you are high in social trust, then, of course, you trust others, you expect others to trust you, and you, you have this general situation where you will hand in the wallet because you it's a, just a simple quid pro quo. You know perfectly well that if somebody found your wallet, they would hand in the wallet themselves. And indeed, I've done so in this country and, and not touched the money. That's what it's like living in a high trust society. So the first thing is IQ. The second thing is that there is a narrow intelligence range in this country. I also did a study where we showed that the IQ range, the standard deviation, the difference between the cleverest fin and the least intelligent fin, is the smallest of any European country. That is because fins are evolved to an extremely harsh, difficult but stable ecology. That militates in favour of being very, very strongly evolved to the ecology because any deviation from that evolution to the ecology will result in you dying out, essentially. And so that what that's going to uh, leave you with is a small gene pool, is a small uh, uh, standard deviation, is a small difference between one extreme and the other extreme. And you see this in intelligence. So the, 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 the gap between the most intelligent fin and the least intelligent is the smallest of any European country. This means you don't get outliers, you don't get people that have very low IQ who are likely to steal things. The third issue is really, um, it's reflected in the fact that this country has essentially the highest schizophrenia rate in Europe. Now, we've discussed, or one of them anyway, we've discussed in other videos, see, my, see videos passive, what is the essence? I mean, there's all kinds of dimensions to schizophrenia, but what is the essence of schizophrenia? The essence of schizophrenia is that you over-detect agency. You are hyper-empathetic. You are empathetic. To, well, empathy is that you are concerned about the external signals of internal states, and you are extremely good at reading them and you are very interested in them. If you are hyper-empathetic, then you over-interpret them, you over-detect them, you over-read them. So uh, a smile becomes that I'm in love with you, or a frown becomes that I want to kill you, and you become paranoid, and then you develop paranoid fantasies, and then you become out of touch with reality, and then you're schizophrenic. So Finns are the, uh, fin the, the rate of schizophrenia in Finland among Finnish-speaking people is double that among Swedish-speaking Finns, which is in turn double that among Swedes, which is in turn significantly higher than it is among the English. So you have this very high rate of schizophrenia. Now, schizophrenia is on a schizotypal spe a spectrum, essentially, uh, from schizophrenia down to schizo schizotypal, down to schizoid. Well, what we're basically talking about is empathy. So while, what you could argue is that a high level of schizophrenia, which you also find in Japan, and not other, by, by the way, is evidence, essentially, it's, it's an extreme tale of a high empathy society.
So what you have with Finns is a people that are very high in empathy, very high in agreeableness, very high in cooperation. Now what that means, of course, and, and, in, and, in, and in feeling the feelings of others, this is an adaptation to the kind of ecology they're in, uh, one could argue, in which it is so harsh and so difficult compared to, let's say, I don't know, you know, England, where I'm from, that you really, really have to get on with people. You must cooperate with people or you'll be killed by the band or you'll be wiped out or whatever. So that's the second thing. Very, very high empathy. The third thing we found is that Finns are higher compared to Finland Swedes, who are f genetically 50% Swedish. Uh, Finns are higher in neuroticism, in social anxiety. They are, they are very, very concerned it's a, a, as a component of anxiety about what other people think of them. So this is very strong sense of shame. Uh, perhaps it's hard to distinguish the two, but a very strong sense of internalized guilt. Uh, very, very strongly a homunculus sitting on their shoulder saying how they should behave and whatever and what's right and what's wrong. And this would make them behave in a more kind of pro-social way. And this is reflected in high social anxiety. Then you have, uh, 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 there's also studies on this. Again, you'll see references in my book. A very small standard deviation in terms of personality. The smallest in Europe, again. So you've got this very small difference between the most agreeable thin and the least agreeable thin. The most neurotic thin and the least neurotic thin. And so, again, what this means is in terms of outliers who are bad outliers who are going to steal, outliers who are low in agreeableness. You're just not going to get many of those. And the final thing is that if you look at the research by Robert Putnam, the Harvard sociologist, what he showed is that a society that where all the people are basically uh, you know, the same, where all the people are just Finns, there's no Swedes there or Danes or whatever, everybody's the same, uh, militates in favour of high social trust because people, for evolutionary reasons, tend to trust those that are, you know, like them and whom they see as part of their group. And once you bring in any kind of, uh, you know, even British people, any kind of foreign group, um, then the, the social trust levels begin to decline, even among the native population, because people think rightly that some people within their own group may collaborate with the outsiders against the in-group. And therefore, Robert Putnam showed in his, um, in his uh, paper, E Pluribus Unum, social trust tends to decline in those kinds of societies. Well, northern Finland remains overwhelmingly Finnish, overwhelmingly Finnish speaking. Um, you may find this boring. Uh, but, but but what it certainly means is that the average Finn that picks it up is going to think, I want to help my... Well, he wouldn't, to be fair, he would even have known. I mean, he would have looked, at, presumably, he would have looked at my driving licence and he would have noticed this person's foreign. That's actually another thing. Let me move on to that. So then you've got the, you've got the high social trust in, in that way. I, that's the final thing, actually. Yes, the cultural cringe element to this. So I showed it, me and, and Guy Madison showed in a paper that, that uh, Finnish people uh, basically look up to English people. Um, and this is demonstrated by the fact that if you look, women tend to select hypergamously in terms of marriage. And we showed, looking at all the marriages in Finland in 2013, we showed that the, the ones that were between Finnish males and, and foreign women, uh, that the country was normally poorer than Finland, the, the woman's country, um, i.e. the women are marrying up hypergamously. And but with, when it's between a Finnish woman and a foreign man, the country is richer and more globally significant than Finland, i.e. the women are marrying hypergamously. And I think there is a degree to which, for various reasons, Finns kind of look up to the English. I have found this here. I don't mean to be sort of up myself, but I really have. They don't want to talk to you if, if you're English. They look up to the English. It's a kind of cultural cringe, I think, that if you're from a small culture which is not very powerful and not very important then you look up to the big boys you look up to the Swedes and you imitate them and you try and be like them and you you feel inferior in, in relation to you're not you're not but you feel that you are you feel this sense that all the culture all the art all the the important stuff comes from these foreign countries and you deal with it by saying oh well we may not be as rich and sophisticated as the Swedes but at least we're tough and at least we're honest and at least we're godly and I think you get the same. There was a paper by A.A. A. Phillips about this in relation to Australia and England. I think you have the same thing with regard to England and the Fre English and the French. 
I think we English look up to the French because we were we were run by the French. The French were our dominant culture for a very long time. The Normans invaded us, and the, the language of the aristocracy was French. And until really quite recently, the language of diplomacy was French. And so there's still in England this cultural cringe in relation to the French. And I think in Finland there is a cultural cringe in relation to what they would call Europe, uh, which is anything other than them. And, and includes England. So that could be relevant as well. But for all of these reasons, I got my wallet back. So I would, um, I would like to thank, if, that, if you're watching that man, get in touch and I'll take you for a, an olut. Olut, baris, sir. Kiros. Hey, hey. Hello, hello, hello. The Jolly Heretic is an online public house which meets on Mondays and Thursdays at 7pm UK time, 2pm New York, in which we discuss the kind of based, fearless science which is increasingly expunged from our woke, joke universities. If you would like to help the Jolly Heretic public house, and there are many ways you can do so, please, please, please become one of my patrons on Subscribestar. Also, if you want to, you can donate to the channel uh, using Odyssey and Entropy, and you can also purchase Jolly Heretic merchandise, such as uh, shirts and and mugs. All of the links are in the description. Again, I'd be most violently grateful if you could assist the Jolly Heretic Public House, and I will see you all soon, and goodbye!